Breaking news. Having a spouse in a nursing home raises poverty risk. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Even I was shocked at this study. <laughs> it's actually, I'm shocked in a good way. Just be upfront with it. Oh, we just did this. Uh, we just reviewed this on the, the Locals live stream I just did a uh, half hour ago. If you want to join my Locals page, five bucks a month, man. Five bucks a month. You get access to Locals only live streams. We do every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And once I get to a certain threshold of paying customers, we'll do even more live streams. At some point, we'll just do locals only live streams because um, I like it. You can say what you want. It's fantastic. So just join me on locals. It's the doobly duke down below. All right. So I found this from the Scorday Way blog at the uh, Center for Retirement Research at Boston College. And uh, there's a bunch of good stuff in there. You know, I, I take issue with a lot of these guys' uh, writings because it's very fear mongering, it's very race based, and I hate racism at all. And it's just, it's very. It's it's frustrating, frustrating how much racial emphasis uh, academics put on everything. Oh, my goodness. Trump breathed there. Hitler breathed there. Thus, Hitler is Trump or Trump is Hitler. It's crazy. All right. Spouse in a nursing home raises poverty risk. Oh, my goodness. Who would have thought? All right. Uh, when nursing home uh, care use when nursing home care uses up a widow's savings, the Medicaid program will kick in. But it's more complicated for couples. If one spouse moves into a nursing home and the bills start piling up, the person who is still living can face serious financial hardship. This is a significant uh, risk facing the one in three married people in their 70s whose spouse will eventually wind up in a nursing home. All right, so <laughs> a significant risk facing the one in three people married in their 70s whose spouse will eventually wind up in a nursing home. So, A, you have to be married, A. You have to be in your 70s, B, which eliminates a lot of people before us. And then on top of that, only one in three end up in a nursing home. So we take this broad population, we get rid of the singles, we get rid of the people who are not in their 70s, and we come down to even the rest, only one in three. <laughs> Doing Stone Pablo. Only one in three have a spouse in a nursing home. Hmm, interesting. All right. It's not unusual to pay roughly 90000 a year for a semi-private room in a nursing home, though many people have relatively short stays. What? A common misconception about Medicare is that it covers all nursing home bills. No, it does not. The program pays for just 100 days of skilled care. Hmm. Huh. Okay, so 90000 a year for a semi-private room in a nursing home. One in three people who are married in their 70s might find their way into a nursing home. And yet Medicare only pays for 100 days. But there's a lot of positive I'm going to share with you. All right. If an unlucky... Oh, right here. Uh, most states, Medicaid... It's not Medicare. Medicaid's for poor people. Kicks in after the couple depletes all but 3000 of their savings. However, there is significant protection for couples under Medicaid eligibility that their home does not count as an asset as long as one spouse continues to live there. So I go to a nursing home. I'm on Medicaid. Charlotte still gets to live in this freaking $8 billion mansion we have. Not too shabby. And she can take reverse mortgage on it, draw income so she's no longer impoverished. Now, at the end of the day, I don't like messing around with Medicaid, but be it as it may. Um, uh, let's see. The researchers followed 2,000 older couples uh, over two decades. That's that's important. That's a longitudinal study. So they're not just looking at data. They're saying, I mean, looking at, here's a spreadsheet. They're actually looking at data from people who are 65, 75, and 85. So that's good. That's what we want. What happens to these people? They're tracking these people. Uh, the researchers followed 2,000 older couples over two decades through a survey that asked individuals to report if they have a spouse in a long-term care facility and how much it costs. So this is real-world data. This is the exact kind of studies we want, not the junk science that comes with uh, evolution or that comes with uh, gas stoves and all that crap, This is or CO2. This is all real science. So check this out. The average for the couples experiencing a nursing home stay was nine months. Medicare covers, I think it meant 90 days Medicare covers, and the other 10 days they cover a small amount. But they cover 90 to 100 days. But I think the full 100 days, they don't cover the full burden of it. But I think the first 90, they cover quite a bit. Anyway, 
The average stay for the couples that experienced a nursing home stay was nine months. So the average stay for a couple that experienced a nursing home stay was nine months. Don't forget, who experienced a nursing home stay? One in three people married in their 70s whose spouse eventually will wind up in a nursing home. The average stay of those one in three people who are married in their 70s, the average stay was nine months. And remember, averages. Averages skews it towards the outlier. So if you take me, you, and Bob down the street, I'm in there for 10 years. You and Bob are in there for a year each, all right? So that what's our average? Our average is four years each because I'm in there for 10. Bob's in there for one. You're in there for one. One plus one plus 10 is 12. Divide by three, that's an average of four. What's our median? Our median is one year. Hmm. So the average is always skewed towards the outliers, man. So anyway, this average, I don't know what the median is, but the average is only nine months. And they racked up, like I say, racked up $20,000 of out-of-pocket costs. That's it. Okay. Not surprisingly, stays lasting more than 100 days past the time of Medicare will pay, double the couple's previous levels of out-of-pocket spending. Okay. So now we go over here. That's just, I'm sorry. That doesn't, that's no big deal. I, I, if, you, if you can't retire because of that, I, I don't know what to tell you. So we're going to go back to this study. All right, and this is from 2021. What level of long-term care supports do people need? For late career workers and retirees, the possibility of needing care late in life is a real concern. This concern may reflect media reports of high likelihood of infirmity and the high cost of care, particularly in nursing homes. Don't go to a nursing home if you're, uh, we, we've seen what happened. We'll try to stay out of nursing homes, let's just put it that way. If I, the idea that my mom would be in a nursing home and I couldn't see her in her last days would infuriate me. And that's exactly what happened. Under Trump's watch, and they can all kiss my ass. Now, but it wasn't Trump who did. I know, I know, but he allowed it to happen. I'm sorry, I'm still mad by this. Seeing the pictures, the, the videos of a man videotaping his mom through a window, and his mom has got Alzheimer's. Say, can't you come see me, Johnny? And she's just in tears and like in pure panic. That's evil, evil, evil. These someone needs to pay account, and uh, and I won't rest until vengeance is ours because this is. And when I say that, I just, there's nothing I can do about it. But I'm so, Francis Collins, uh, Fauci, freaking the stupid clown from Pfizer, who's Trump's guy, Scott, what's his last name? I forgot. The guy from Pfizer and the FDA. I forgot his name. Scott something. Remember Scott? Yeah, they all suck. And they all can kill. Uh, Paul Offit, he sucks. They all suck. They all need to be held accountable. Nuremberg trials, man. Let's do a Nuremberg trial, and then we can have a truth and reconciliation. I was listening to Brett Weinstein talk about how Joe Rogan is like, let's just forgive and forget. And Brett's like, no, we need a truth and reconciliation. And I'm like, no, we need a Nuremberg trial first. We need people to swing, and then we can have a truth and reconciliation. Oh, I'm so angry by this. I'm not going to lie to you. It really infuriates me seeing these innocent people, seeing a, a lady in a freaking, a freaking, freaking funeral. <laughs> Husband's being buried, you know, and the priest is giving the freaking thing, and she's crying, old lady, and her son comes up to hug her, and the freaking scumbag of the nursing home says, You can't do that. Six, you know, social distance. It's inhumane. These are evil Satanists. And the only way to deal with Satanists is to destroy them. So you have to destroy Satanists. You can't tolerate them. You cannot tolerate Satan. That's why, just real quick, I'm going to show you something here. Tolerance is not a Christian virtue. It's not, not, see that right there? Smash the Satanist, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Through the legal course, of course. But you need a Nuremberg trial, and then you need freaking truth and reconciliation. Then we can get back to being hunky-dory. Fear of dependency may make retirees reluctant to spend down their 401k balances, depriving themselves of necess necessities as they age. The narrative that emerges from the academic literature is different, however. Many people experience only brief periods of needing care, and, will, and the burden in terms of money spent on formal caregivers will be minimal. What? Background. And we're going to talk about inst instrument, instrumental activities of daily living. That's IADLs, unlike ADLs, activities of daily living. So IADLs are shopping and preparing meals. That's going to be a non, a minimal a long-term care service to support need. If you need someone to shop for you or prepare your prepared meals, 
a, uh, a severe would be you need two activities of daily living support. Basically, someone needs to change your butt. You know, get, help you walk because you can't get up and transfer. those. You can't toilet. You can't bathe and those kind of things. You can't feed yourself. A recent study estimated that a 65, if any, a 65-year-old has a 7 in chance, uh, 7 to 10 chance of developing a severe need for long-term care services and support, which sounds alarming. Ah! But this overall risk of need masks tremendous variation in the duration and intensity of that need. While some might require years of around-the-clock care in a skilled care facility with dementia, others might just need occasional help from retirees to recover from illnesses and injuries. But they all get thrown into the long-term care service and support. We need it. Seven to ten. So everyone wants to assume it's Alzheimer's. It's not. In most cases, getting support will not require spending years in a care facility. According to the study above, only 12% of retirees will spend four or more years in a nursing home. Do you hear that, amigos? 12%. As I always said, the outliers skew the data. Instead, a majority who need support will likely get it from relatives or even from those who rely on paid support will often get it in a residential setting or an institution for only a short living, a short period. Think. Studies examining the intensity of long-term care services and support needs among the elderly have found three types of individuals. Those who need supports only with IADLs, shopping, preparing food, uh, or low intensity, medium intensity, or with one ADL, again, toileting, feeding yourself, transferring, bathing, and two ADLs, that's where long-term care comes in. That'll be like dementia. All right, so let's keep going. We used 20 years of data from the Health Retirement Survey at the University of Michigan, a biennial longitudinal study of Americans over the age of 50 to determine the lifetime long-term care service and support need for individuals starting at the age of 65. For roughly 60% of the sample, it is possible to observe the entire lifespan of the individual and their long-term care service and support needs. For the other 40% who are still alive, uh, their lifetime needs are projected based on the experience of current and other cohorts from earlier studies. All right, let's keep going. We're going to go down here. Perhaps the most interesting finding is a very strong relationship between self-reported health at age 65 and 70 in subsequent long-term care service and support needs. 30% of individuals who report their health as excellent or very good did not have any and this is at 65 to 70, did not have any long-term care service and support needs, all right? That share drops to 5% who did not have any long-term care service and support needs if your health isn't fair or poor shape. So is your crappy old job making you healthy or making you poorer health-wise? If it's making you poorer health-wise, you're more likely to have long-term care service and support needs. If your crappy old job is doing that, get the hell out of your crappy old job, get your health in better order, then you can take off the table the concern about long-term care services and support for a extended period of time. I mean, look, anything, we know about 15% of the population has long-term care, is significant long-term care. The rest of us don't, man. They don't. And I just proved it right there. With real-life people, real-life studies. Oh, we're, people are catching on. They're starting to see the freaking facade for what it is. All these liars and, and these lying liars, these uh, nattering the bobs of negativity, as Spiro Agnew, our hero, our hero, Spiro, said, nattering the bobs of negativity or something like that. Just all negative all the time. Oh, my goodness, 7 and 10 are going to need long-term care services and support. Oh, my goodness, that means they all have Alzheimer's. It doesn't mean that at all, at all. It's fake news, as comes to be expected. If it's doomsday media, you know it's going to be fake. For some reason, they want you as your slave, as their slave. Work, 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 work. Take on debt, take on debt, take on debt. Work, work, work. Screw that. Life's too short. Love your thoughts. Don't forget to sign up for Locals. We'll see you.